Let's begin. Is this an example of an electric field? Yeah. yeah. No, I would say probably not. Why put up there? Because it looks cool. <laughs> is it electricity? Yes. Yeah, for it's sure, right? Field. It, still has, it still has an electric field around it. It might have an it might have an electric field around it, but I wouldn't really call it the best example of electric field. It's just a cool picture of lightning that allows me to identify which set of notes that I'm supposed to do. You should draw that picture, by the way. That'll be on the test. There's always some kid that says, should I draw that? Okay, much of this that you're going to write down here, if you choose, is basically what I talked about yesterday. You really need to think of your better. Okay, much of this is going to be reviewed from yesterday. So if you were paying close attention yesterday, you should be good. If you want to write it down, also fine with me. Yeah. An electric field is similar to a gravitational field. We talked about that yesterday. A gravitational field is defined as the amount of force exerted upon a unit of mass. And on Earth, it's equal to 9.8 newtons per kilogram. Right? And is it the same sort of everywhere on Earth? Yes. More or less, yes. There are slight variations in the Earth's gravitational field, but for the most part, it's the same everywhere. And that direction is always down, right? A large gravitational field exists around any object that has mass, whether it be Earth, the Moon, Jupiter, Uranus. <laughs> Someone always laughs. Yours is your anus is so large it has a gravitational field. That's the scientific fact. Well, the way you said it made it Yeah, I know. I'm going to tell Just my trying dad to appeal to the 11 year olds, and that's all. I'm going to tell my dad that when he asked me what I learned today. Yeah? That your anus has a gravitational field? Big one, too. Yeah, I'm glad to hear that. That has a little bit of mass. Do I have a gravitational field? Yes, you do, but like it's minuscule. Yeah. Negligible, man. Yeah, it's really small because it's a little piece of shit. <laughs> okay. Did I say that, Nate? Did I use that sort of language? Sure thing it is. No, I wasn't. You don't need to speak like that. Come on, Nate, grow up. Now, the same is true for charged objects, and I don't mean ones that you haven't paid for yet. So you did that one, too. Okay, around any charged object, there exists an <laughs> electric field. Obviously, objects with large charge have a strong electric field, and these fields are shown by a series of arrows radiating either inward or outward, and these are lines of force, or what we call field lines, and so we talked about, about those yesterday. Like, like cell batteries. How is that? So all this slide really does is just compare gravitational fields to electric fields. They are for all intents and purposes, very similar, right? One major difference between the two is what? Gravity always pulls in, right? Whereas electric fields can either pull in, track, or repel. That's one major difference. And they kind of look like this, right? Did I go too fast, Sam? Okay, Sam, don't draw every arrow. Five or six is good. Okay, that, my friends, is an electric field. Why are the arrows pointing out? Because it's going out. It's repelling. It's repelling, right? And how do we know that? Remember this whole thing about the. Oh, is there something else? Uh, there should be one more thing here. Hmm. Note that the closer the lines are together, the stronger the field is, right? I've talked about this a few times. Strong here, weaker there, and this is dependent upon the uh, distance. The inverse square law applies here as well. In other words, if the distance is doubled, the field strength is quartered. That is true for things like charge. It is true for things like um, light intensity. If you're twice as far away from a bright light bulb, it's a quarter of the, the real 
the whiteness, growing it. Uh, sound, the same thing, decreases with inverse square law. Lots of things that sort of go out, sort of in that um, circular fashion, or like that. We reviewed this yesterday, right? Yeah, this is all basically stuff that I talked about yesterday, right? Okay. I'm just kind of reviewing and getting people caught up that maybe we're here, or people that like to write stuff down. This is their chance to do that. I like writing stuff down. It's not a joke. Oh, that was bad. Not good. Not good. PowerPoints just don't work for me. Okay, inverse square off. To show the direction of the field, what do we use? We bring a small positive test charge and it will repel it, right? How do you know? If it's positive? Yeah, well, how are you going to watch an electron be repelled? I'm literally, I'm literally no, Nate, we don't need extra talk, right? How are you going to... We're not talking about a little electron here. We're talking about any any small object that could have a charge. It could have a charge of many thousands of electrons. What's going to have a... Give an example of something that's going to have a charge. Well, the old plastic balloon on the hair, hair kind of thing, right? So, how do you... How would you have... So, if you had something that's negatively charged, like, whatever, I don't know, something that's negatively charged, you have a balloon that had a positive charge. It would attract. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Like, so how do you get a negative charge? Yeah, how do you get it depends on, you should have learned this actually in grade 9. There's there's a list of items I can show it to you if you want. Okay, so back to what we were talking about. We're talking about the direction of the field is based on a positive test charge. So in other words, this guy right here is positive, right? Because the field points away from it. Is it always named a positive test charge? Is it always a positive test charge? Yeah. Yes. How come? Because I said so. It's just like red means stop and green means go. It's convention. It's just the way it is. Okay. It's always a positive test charge. Pardon me? I just said it will always be a positive test charge. Always. Always a strong word. It will always. <laughs> now, is this what you mean, Gage? Will you ever have a negatively charged object creating a field? The answer to that is yes, you might. In which direction does the field point? Towards. How come towards? Because the positive test charge would be attracted. Right. For some reason, everyone's attracted to negative people. <laughs> this brings us to the formula that you're going to use today. E equals F over Q. And when I say F, I mean force electric, electric force. What kind of force? Electric force. Force, because it's a force, and the E stands for the kind of it. It's the electric force, right? Just like when I use FW for weight force, or... Um, at H for horizontal force. The subscript labels it for you. So the electric field E is the electric force per, what does Q stand for? Q stands for charge. So E is the field intensity or strength measured in newtons per coulomb. F is electric force in newtons and Q is the charge in coulomb. You should be listening. This is where you learn. This part here. Nate, do you remember what Millikan found out was the charge on an electron? you remember the number? No? Anyone remember the number? It's more. It's much less than 10. Jay? I got the negative 19 part right. Right on. <laughs> 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. That's kind of the modern rounded version. What is that? That's the charge on that's a single charge. teeny tiny electron. I remember the number, I just didn't yeah. know what it was for. So that's like point zero 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 eighteen zeros one six coulombs. Really, really tiny number. What is that M C and N and Newtons per coulomb, that's the units. Newtons per coulomb, Newtons coulomb. You're gonna have to be able to use them, right? Okay, so one electron is one single electron is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. That's going to come up later when we talk about it. 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. 
you might even if you watch enough Big Bang, you might even see it on the whiteboard at some point. I'm, I've, I'm sure I've seen it there. Now, which is stronger, positive fields or negative fields? Neither. They're the same. The intensity or strength of an electric field is the same for a positive charge object as it is for a negative charge. Only the direction is different. Positive is not stronger than negative. Do not get that idea in your head. You can believe it. You go right ahead. You're just wrong. But if I've got a charge here of, say, uh, four, 14 coulombs, but they're, it's positive, and here I've got a charge of minus 14 coulombs, their field strength is the same. Just, just different direction. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Okay. Let's cut all the scientific theory malarkey and let's just do the math, right? Let's, let's do it. Let's just do the math. I've got two examples. I don't think I've got them written out for you. You should really, if you haven't been writing anything down, you should probably write the sound down. There's only two. Oh. Unfortunately, the biggest problem here is not the theory. The biggest problem here is that the numbers are really weird. And what I mean is they're usually in some form of scientific notation. Okay? You have to be able to handle it on your calculator. Again, the big issue here is scientific notation. So what is the electric field intensity at a point where positive charge of 2.4 times 10 to the minus 6 coulomb experiences a 3.2 newton force? What do I know? Everything. Well, I'm, it's asking for what is the electric field intensity. There, it's asking for E. I don't know they don't know E. E question mark. Positive charge. Q equals 2.4 times 10 to the minus 6. And the force is... 3.2 newtons. Some of you may benefit in writing that out. Some of you may think that's a big waste of time. Either of those opinions is valid. It's whatever works for you. If you can do it. If you can't do it, then write these out. Do what you need to do to be successful. Hey, where'd they go? Did you want to see it again? Did I write 16? So, you should write the formula. That for sure you should do. The electric force is 3.2 newtons. The Q is 2.4 times 10 to the minus 6. And you should get an answer of 1.3 times 10 to the 6. Your calculator may give it to you as 1, 3, 0, 0. How do you put in those little numbers? Okay. So, that's what we got to do today is make sure that you can use your side of the calculator. So, try that on your calculator. If you can't get it, I'm going to come around and make sure you know how to do it. Remember, you're using either the EXP. Have I talked to you at all about this? No. Have I ever, I've never talked to you about this? No, I No, like, seriously, I need to know. I have? Just once? No. Okay. You should be using the EXP or the EE button on your calculator. Do not... Go times 10 EXP. EXP and EE both stand for times 10 to the power of. Uh, okay? So, in other words, you should be typing in something like. You would, you would type in uh, 3.2 divided by 2.4. EXP negative 6 equals. That's what you would type in. Okay. Here's example number two. Try it on your own. I'll give you the answer in about two or three minutes. Try it on your own. You'll notice that this time it's asking you for the force. Use the force gauge. 
funny. Just look. There's your answer. <laughs> I would accept here 2.0 times 10 to the minus 2 newtons as well. I would accept either one of those, okay? No, it shouldn't be 2.4. Or, no, exponents there, 4 and a minus 6 gives you a minus 2, right? Oh, six things don't get me started. Don't get me started. Okay. But remember, on your calculator, do not go times 10. Don't do that. Use the EXP. That's what it stands for. Okay. I'm done. On that one, how are you going to see it? On the back of this sheet. On the back of this sheet, you will see the problem set. There are answers there. Okay, on the back of the sheet, I'll come back in Okay, listen, give me 30 more seconds, Dave. 30 more seconds. The front page here is basically all that stuff that we just talked about as well. It's just written in a different format. If you're still not getting the theory, there's another one for you to read. If you get it, ignore it. Flip the page over. Flip the page. 15 seconds. On the back here, there are six questions, just like this. Okay? They range, they get a little bit harder once you get down to number five and number six. There are answers on the back. There are solutions on the wall right over there above the laptops. There are also solutions in the red binder that marks Physics 30S solutions. There are also solutions on Schoology listed under uh, materials. So you have lots of different ways you can get to the solutions. You must be able to do these. Are you following me? I'm glad that that's what you thought was the most important thing to find out how much I went over time. <laughs> okay, I'm giving you the rest of the period. Use your time wisely. Basically, just means size. How big is it? Yep.